Modularization is a key principle that is followed whenever we are creating the machine learning projects. So in this video, let's explore how does the modularized code would look like for an MLOps project. So let's get started. As we progress in today's session, I'll take you through what does it mean by modularization and what are the best practices that we need to follow whenever we are implementing the modularization of the code. Now, this principle is apply, applicable for the machine learning engineers as well as the MLOps engineers whenever they are working in the project. So let's get started, guys. So to get started and to help, uh, to help us understand, okay, what does it mean by modularization of the code? I'll go ahead and open up one of the project that I have got with me in my local system. Okay, I'll just share my screen. So this is an example, okay, which describes the complete modularization of a complex project. First of all, when we talk about modularization, what exactly it is? So when I say modularization, especially whenever we are designing any workflows in MLOps, it's about simplicity and dividing the overall workflow into smaller self-contained steps so that each step can do it in an effective manner. That's the core idea about modularization. So by breaking down the complex processes into these manageable modules, or we also call it as a Python script, it will actually help us to troubleshoot. It will help us to optimize more easily and even it will also help us to adapt to the new requirements in a much faster manner. And more importantly, when we create the modularized code, it will help everyone in the team to understand how the various pieces would fit together. So by having this pipeline or by having this overall approach, this actually makes the MLOps pipeline a clearer, a maintainable one and better be and better prepared for the overall continuous integration and the more importantly as the project matures it will also play a major role in continuous improvement as well so let's understand what exactly is this modularization and how does a typical project would look like when you are working as an mlops engineer so the code that you would see the folder structure that you're seeing right here. This is a typical folder structure that you would be seeing when you think about deploying any machine learning model in the production environment. So here to give you an architecture background, I'll just give a quick architecture background. So here for version control, this project is using the GitHub. So we, we are tracking the source code with the help of Git. Then to perform the automation, we are making use of the GitHub workflow. So there are two workflow files that is present right here. One is a SageMaker pipeline and the other one is test pipeline. So whenever we perform any commit for this data set, so in that scenario in the backend, it's going to go ahead and run some tests in the backend to validate whether the code is working correctly. And based on that, it will also go ahead and trigger the another pipeline, which is going to create the resources in the cloud. Okay, so those are the these are the two files that you're seeing right here. Then over here, we also see the other folders as well. Now this typically describes how you would generally work in the overall MLOps project. So when we talk about MLOps, we'll be dealing with the data set, the model file, as well as the other pre-processing files that are required for applying the machine learning on the data set. Because when we think about the overall machine learning life cycle, it consists of data ingestion that is getting the data, data pre-processing and feature engineering, model training, evaluation, then comes the deployment and the monitoring. So this is how a typical end-to-end -end pipeline would look like. So that means when we are having a folder structure, so this folder structure is required to follow in the same way which we typically work and more importantly, it should follow the modularized approach. So for the illustration purpose, we have a data folder. 
where we actually have a data set where we have a data set about the uh, machine learning like data set for the model that we want to apply now in this example i have it as part of my version control system in some cases we'll have the data set directly present in our s3 bucket so the data folder over here represents the data set then we have a model folder now this is a folder which contains the trained model file whenever we apply any machine learning model we'll have a variable generally it's it's actually a variable or an object now in order to ensure that it is transportable we save that variable into a binary file and this model that you see right here that is dot joblib it's actually a binary file where the machine learning engineer has saved it now this is a file which we have to transport it to other environments as well so that this model can be used in generating the prediction for the new incoming data then you can see that we have an src folder which is also called as a source folder now this is a folder where you'll be seeing all the files or the modules which we'll be using in the mlops project so here we have a configuration folder where we have maintained the manual configuration that we want to have so here the configuration is maintained in the format of a yaml file so it can be maintained as a yaml file or it can be maintained as a python file as well and then apart from this individual configuration generally we use this configuration for any manual settings so just like the envir like uh, alternatively people will also use the env file okay so instead of the env file in some cases people would also use the configuration okay then we have a processing folder now processing folder contains the python module which takes care of the, the data pre processing and the feature engineering that means using the training data set performing the actions on top of the data set is what is being written inside this processing folder okay the data management is about loading the data processes is for performing the processing so that's how the folders will be structured and there are some utilities to go ahead and use it at the future places then we have a trained model folder this is like the internal one in case if you are doing any experimentation let's say if i'm using ml flow then in such scenario we'll be using it over here okay and apart from that here in order to perform the individual step so in order to perform the training there's a separate python module has been created in this example that's called as train dot mod train dot py file then to merge all those steps into a sequential manner there's a separate file that's called as a pipeline and here in this pipeline this will refer to the other files that i have in the different different folder then we have a model registry this is another file which is being used to ensure that this is going to ensure that the model is available in the stage maker okay so this is about the src folder where the source code has been written then we have an exeboost this is the custom model hence the whatever the additional settings needs to be done it's part of a separate folder and whatever the test cases and the test that has to be performed it's part of this test folder right here where the unit testing and the integration testing whatever the testing that we want to perform it's specified right here under this test folder then we then we'll go ahead and mention any other dependency file for other application are being used right here to give you an example we have a requirements.txt generally we'll be mentioning it in the root folder now this contains the overall libraries that are required so that it can be run in a required manner so that we'll be able to set up the environment and apart from that we have a pytest configuration which will go ahead and perform the testing and the docker file which will help us to build the docker image using the various files that we have got the docker file for pre processing docker file for training the docker file for model registration so all those files will be creating like this 
And in this way, we'll have all the files present in our repository. Then whenever we perform the commit, so all these files will be utilized, we'll make use of the Docker, we'll build the Docker image, we'll push it to the container registry, then we will make use of the pipeline to run the exact machine learning pipeline, and we will be creating the resources on the cloud and we'll be deploying it. So the key thing to note down here is, there's a clear differentiation between each and every process. So data folder contains the data set and the model folder will have a train model. And SRC is a common file folder name that we specify to mention the various source files which are required for the execution. And then to combine everything, generally we'll have a train, train file, train training files. And yeah, so let me just show you. So we have configuration, processing, and for training we have train, and we have creation of pipeline, we have pipeline.py. And then we'll go ahead and create any custom data, which is specific to the environment that we are working. Then we'll also have a Docker file. So this is how a typical complex project would look like when you are when you take up any MLOps project. Okay, so like when, as you start working in the MLOps, you might not see this level of depth right away. But as the project matures, so more and more teams, the surrounding teams will start adding the files to the repository. And that's how you will see the folder structure becoming expanded and expanded. But the overall, the structure would follow the same. So you'll have a source code, you'll have a data set, you'll have the manual configuration, which will be stored either in the environment variable or a configuration file. And then you will have an automation written if you are using the, the code pipeline, a code pipeline and code build in such scenario, maybe you'll have a, a YAML file which is related to that cloud environment. Okay, that is build spec.yaml file. If I, if since in this case, I'm using GitHub action, hence you see the YAML file written in the workflows folder. So, but the core concept remains the same guys. So this was about a quick idea about the importance of modularity and how does a typical project structure would look like in any MLOps project. I hope you had fun learning in this video. So folks, if you want to join live from the next session, just check out the link that is provided in the description, join our community, and I can't wait to help you in your MLOps and Generative AI journey. Take care guys, and I'll see you next time.